Sup, motherfuckers. I'm kidding. Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, let's. It's gonna be part two of Gunslinger. I like the first one. I like how fast paced it is, and and let's see what's up. Let's hear all those great stories. The Magnificent One. Killing John and Ringo closed the first chapter of Silas's saga of revenge and started him on a bloody career as a bounty hunter. So that was the beginning. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd find him. There they are, motherfuckers. As my late father pointed out to me more than once, God made men. Samuel Colt made an equal. Deserve to die like this. Sure as hell you do. Oh. Are you kidding me? That killed me? Shaw, Jesus Christ. Oh, it's not that way, this way. I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. I'm putting you down! There were thieves and killers, robbing travelers and hijacking gold shipments. Like those that ran with Plummer. Some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the state. Oh, shot I missed that. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's son. Plummer had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand while stealing them blind with the other. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. I messed it up. Ah, not fucking around. Put that moron out of his misery. How did you show up there? What the fuck? I was outnumbered and in way over my head, but I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize it. They must have thought I was touched. I thought I was some kind of hero. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine. But once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. I got this. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. You can't as there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. Okay, okay. Just getting started, bitches. Ain't that some bitch? Get 
Besides, once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. I'm ending you! A single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. Okay. Don't use concentration, that's for pussies. Quick reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. Okay, that was confusing. Alright. That was weird. Whew. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come? With all that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. No lily wagon. One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted too. That was close. Oh wait, I'm supposed to run there. Okay. Makes sense. Not just moronic, but clearly designed. Holy shit. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. <laughs> okay, so that... Well, that's actually Instead, cool. I spotted a ladder. Way into the mine from the opposite side. That's actually a pretty cool way to show like different like design, because you get to play it through different approaches. Around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Gotcha. None can hide hints about enemies behind you, spot enemies even beyond your field of view. Train concentration markers on the edge of the screen when point at every nearby enemy that you would not normally be able to see. Gunslinger, trapper. Dull wheel. Revolvers grab two revolvers, give them hell when you carry a revolver, you can press wheel up or three to deal wheel. Revolver ammo capacity. Longer combos. Don't stop your killing frenzy so soon your combo meter will stay active for 50% longer. Better chaining and longer combos mean more experience. Guns blazing, gunsling, or fast revolver reload. Re reload your revolvers in a blink of an eye. You'll be able to load bullets into your revolver cylinder while it's spinning, which means 50% faster. Um, I mean, I guess do this. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I, get it. I needed to make a leap of faith. Which ain't easy when you're suspended between heaven and hell. I was determined not to give up, however. As Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the sheriff was up to, people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find old Bob. 
and I had made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. But first, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder. Elevator. I picked the more convenient and more dangerous route. Wait, why is it more dangerous? Because they can hear me or something? Oh. Dumbasses. Blummer was a mad dog killer. And the people of Nevada City deserved better. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Right, well, well, he was a sheriff of both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Oh, he's gonna show up now, right? It's another boss fight. Lawman. Outlaw. Scalawag. Henry Plummer. Henry Plummer. Alright, let me see what you have. What you got? They're gonna bury you in a million pieces. Just getting worse and worse for you. Hey. Henry Plummer was clearly unhinged, and I could see right away that this was gonna take some doing. Jesus Christ, that was quick. What the fuck? They're gonna need a dustpan to pick you up. I'm going all medieval on your ass. Who is shooting me? Wait, is it just him? Show yourself. I can Oh, he has he's dual wielding. Is that why? Okay, I think that's why. Because he's dual wielding his um What are you? Yellow? Catch this, you son of a bitch! I got a lot more dynamite than you! <sighs> Oh my god, no way. I wonder if I can use my concentration on him. Man, I don't see him throwing these. Holy shit, am I blind? <laughs> it's actually crazy. Oh! 
Oh, did they get him? Oh, Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. Oh shit. And now I was officially a bounty hunter. Good stuff. Hey. Right. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Hardin as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. John Wesley Fard Hardin. Fardin. <laughs> Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody. Not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. Okay. Silas claims that he took up bounty hunting as a way to finance the pursuit of his remaining quarry, Roscoe Bob Bryant. Be quick or be dead. I dodged death many a time. And that night in Abilene was no different. Wait, why do I have this shit? I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wesley. Uh, I thought the Texas Rangers got hard. Yeah, that's what they want you to believe. It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres to the very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me, and... No, oh, I walked in faster. Wait, I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Harden was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. Fathers and husbands, brothers and sons, men with families who cared about them. He was a bona fide folk hero by then, and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold out here. I'm freezing my giblets. God damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. As most of them were wanted as well. I figured Harden was here somewhere, but to get to him, I'd have to get past his gun. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Harden wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friends. Harden's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their jefe of my unwelcome presence. Okay, they started pre-firing me, cheating bastards. Yeah, you know you can't beat me. I'm Gave him some you dynamite. Is he behind me? Let the boys know we got another law dog. I wondered if Bob was among them. I steeled myself for the fight ahead. For as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Oh, I'm getting in town. Ah, oh, okay. So this is where it begins. Okay. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. 
Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. No way I missed that. That's bullshit. Wait, what? I should Yeah, there's so many secrets here, but I just like just go ham. mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Suffice it to say, nobody there was happy to see me. In fact, I felt a certain hostility. Oh my god, I can't see him. Jesus. Alright. Well, I wasted concentration there. I don't have any more ammo. No way. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later, I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. Oh, boy. There he is. First kill at 15. Killed a man for snoring. <laughs> and 40 more for breathing. John Wesley Harden. Holy shit. I felt a bolt of adrenaline. Or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. Wait, how did I press? You didn't hit me then. I'm sure of it. <laughs> There's no way. I I did get there first. What? Oh come on, give me speed! Holy shit! Oh my god! I zoned out.
That man was faster than Grease Lightning. But being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. Wait, did I kill him? So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Nice. <laughs> that was confusing, because I thought I dodged it the first time around. Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, do you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Grey Wolf, Episode 5. Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. God the Americans. Dances with renegades. Silas Greaves pursued dangerous outlaws like John Wesley Harden, hoping they would help lead him to Bryant. A bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high they tickled the nether regions of heaven. A long time ago on a mountain far, far away. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony. And the slaughter was unspeakable. Alright, the slaughter was unspeakable. Execute nearby enemies, steal some headshots without even aiming. Pressing and holding Q will eat up all your concentration in exchange for marking nearby enemies for execution with perfect headshots. I understood his anger. As there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution and were more than willing to die for him. Here we go. This is it. They saw me before I saw them. Man, it's kind of hard to see. my mind that maybe this wasn't such a good idea but now that the shooting has started there is no backing down Wait, what is my what is my legendary? The unknown interior of this magnificent firearm modified. It's spring to allow extra bullets in the magazine. In addition, it's lighter and more durable, which by itself makes handling easier and reduces recoil. Ooh. Okay. It was rugged country, the winter home of the Cherokees, and that's why they had retreated there. Oh baby, we're going ham now. I like this. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did. But then again, I got a lot of those. Because it was basically him or them. 
but yeah. Did you find Grey Wolf? Not at that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hideout. Oh my god, I keep rushing. A deep crevice that led to a deeper cave. Don't tell me you're in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure angry cussedness. Ooh. Search the caves. Grey Wolf. Oh, this is like a vanish point, right? See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide, and I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit as they had torches on the walls. Come on. Cave. Big as hell, Ben. Chiricahua had hit out there during the Indian Wars. Thought it was a secret here. <laughs> Holy shit. This guy is shooting fast. They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? <laughs> to be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones. I tricked him. He thought I was reloading, but I only reloaded two two shots. How come you know so much about engines? A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Polygyny is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. I haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? Oh, well, I pursued him into the Cave of Death. I there came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows, and I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. Oh, they didn't fight. 
as his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men, and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul will have no wind, I have no tears. He said I was a great warrior, a coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there were definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverines. They couldn't stop me, though, and Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk. see any way out of this trap but suddenly one just appeared kind of like a miracle I felt find like I would be lost in that damn cave forever Finally, I found myself back outside, perched on the edge of a precipice, overlooking a thundering white water river. To get where I was going required several leaps of faith, but no way in hell I was turning back. How do you slide like that? Jesus Christ. Alright, come on. Chased after him, determined to make him explain the meaning of all that mumbo jumbo. Mumbo jumbo is right. Are you making this all up as you go? A few details may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened to me. There were dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from on high. Dozens? Well, maybe not dozens, but there was a lot of them. At least three or four. Well, more than that, a little later. Jesus Christ. This guy is hiding in the in the branches. Got another skill, let's see, Trapper. You can be bulletproof, but you can be more resistant than average. Every fourth enemy bullet shot from a short weapon will bounce off of you. Alright, I don't care about that. Longer combos. Capacity on the run. So I think we do this. Oh! I pressed the wrong button. It's okay. We're back. Okay. Hello? Can you not? Steep climb up creek ahead of me and scrambled up those rocks like a mountain goat. I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. But wouldn't you know it? That crafty son of a bitch led me right into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, so there be at least a hundred apaches around here. A hundred? God be my witness. 
<laughs> oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not gonna drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of them. Jesus. my god I don't know if I like the two revolvers it makes me shoot like a maniac There's the last one. Okay. Cool. And in the end, a path appeared before me that I had not seen before. <laughs> the storytelling is pretty cool. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. But it was like that some of bitch disappeared into thin air. So I never actually caught him. Never did find him. And never did collect my goddamn bounty. Alright. Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. The Dalton Brothers. I think we're gonna save this one for the next episode. But let's get the Those intro. Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of right? I did my best, sir. We all did. Okay. So let's pause it right here. Grey Wolf, the Apache medicine man, offered Silas a mysterious warning, cautioning him not to bellow in the poison of bitterness and hate. They call me Bounty Hunter. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. So we're gonna see what Daltons did um, in the next episode. I hope you guys like this. Um, I'm playing on hard difficulty, so it takes a little bit longer, but hey, um, yeah. Make sure you leave a like, make sure you comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.